the ocean in the quest to interpret the world. Leonardo da Vinci was, after all, not only uh, the first scientist, but one of the greatest painters of the Italian Renaissance. That tradition has been nurtured here at the Perimeter Institute, where talks by some of the world's leading, almost eminent scientists appear concurrently with recitals by Yo-Yo Ma and Brian Eno, where exhibitions and talks by artists and filmmakers feature alongside jazz and cabaret at the Black Hole Bistro here inside this architecturally stunning building sited here on the shores of a, of a contemplative lake in Waterloo, Ontario. And so it has been with this inaugural Quantum to Cosmos Festival, a gathering that has brought, uh, has sought to highlight this wonderful mix of the most noble of human pursuits, the quest to understand nature in all her complexity and the urge to revel in the beauty through the arts. Um, it has been a fabulous journey these past 10 days in which I have been honoured to take part as a host and moderator. Uh, alas, tonight the journey uh, must come to an end and I have with me three people who will help me reflect on where it is that we have been and what we have learnt. I'll give you a quick summary. Um, at the very end, we've got Raymond Laflamme, who's a director of the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo and a physicist here at the Perimeter Institute. Ivan Semenyuk is a journalist in residence at the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto and a celebrated Canadian science writer. And of course, Neil Turek, who has been seen throughout the festival in so many um, roles. He's a director of the Primer Institute and a noted theorist in cosmology, particularly around the Big Bang. So let's start on this reflection. I'm going to start with you, Ray. I've heard during the, this festival that nobody really understands quantum mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> Even after the 10 days of the festival? <laughs> it's like this is nearly verbatim a quote from the famous physicist Richard Feynman. He won a Nobel Prize on his work of quantum mechanics, and despite this, he mentioned that he couldn't understand really the foundations of quantum mechanics or really the basic ideas. What he really meant is not that we don't understand the mathematics and how to manipulate the concepts together and kind of make prediction to do experiments. What he meant was that there are phenomena in quantum mechanics which are very counterintuitive, things which is very different than our day-to-day -day experience. And these ones are really mind-boggling. Maybe I could compare this to hundreds of years ago when people thought that the Earth was flat and suddenly somebody came in, Galileo, and thought that it was round. It changed really the perception completely of the world in which we live. And really, what was the conception of the people today we go on an airplane and you go around the Earth, and then you know that you haven't found anything which was kind of flat, but you ne never found the edge. We're at the same place in some sense in quantum mechanics. There are phenomena of having objects who can be at two places at the same time. That sounds completely crazy. It doesn't seem to make sense. But we do the, the experiments, which is equivalent of getting in an airplane, and the only way we can explain this these experiments is to say things have to be more in one place. And this is what we have to kind of absorb to try to kind of get intuition of all of these phenomena. And the only way to get this intuition will be to get quantum technology, the extension of our fingers to go and manipulate the microscopic world. I guess nature doesn't have to make sense. We just have to try and understand her, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> is there a difference? Well, <laughs> well tell me, about, one of the things that got a lot of discussion